Stay tuned for the biggest fish, the hottest bites, this week here on In-Depth Outdoors. With James Holst and Pat McSherry and the rest of the IDO fishing team. We're headed to the best fisheries across the upper Midwest and Canada. We'll fish longer, explore unfished bodies of water, and go further off the beaten path in search of the hottest bites in fresh water. Look at that fish. <laughs> this is In-Depth Outdoors. Thanks for tuning in to today's episode of In-Depth Outdoors. I'm James Holt. Now in the weeks leading up to today's episode, this is week 13 here at In-Depth Outdoors, so we're halfway through our broadcast season already. Uh, we were starting to think that winter was just gonna slide out with a whimper. Uh, conditions were so mild. But as everybody knows, winter has come back with a vengeance and uh, really thrown all of us that are still out there on the ice, trying to enjoy the ice fishing that's available, threw us a curveball. Uh, this is the event every winter that we find here at In-Depth Outdoors to be one of the most challenging situations to deal with. A long stretch of mild weather that is ended by a very strong cold front. Doesn't really matter where you go, doesn't matter the species you target, you can pretty much count on the fact that the fish are gonna be very negative. So uh, on today's show, we head to the Fox River uh, near Green Bay, Wisconsin. We're gonna be fishing with Connor Bowen and PJ Vick. And our plan is, a little counterintuitive to what many might think would be our plan. We're gonna get shallow. Uh, we're gonna target walleyes and see if we can't put baits in front of enough fish to get a show for this week. So uh, stick around. I think you're gonna find it very interesting. We get some cool underwater footage and really wrap it all together with a lot of flasher footage so everybody can see how these fish are interacting with our baits under these really tough conditions. So stick around. I think you're gonna enjoy today's show. Today we're on the Fox River fishing on Super Bowl Sunday, and uh, we've got some really tough conditions today. It's our first deep cold front of the year. There's about 35 degree below zero temperatures with windshield out there today. So what we're gonna do is uh, we're gonna hunker inside the Eskimo hub houses. Uh, and we've got kind of a unique arrangement today. We've got two of them pulled up tight together so we can kind of remain social and uh, keep the cameraman from having to run back and forth from one hub to the next out there in those cold conditions. So on that end, we've got Connor Bowen, and PJ Vick fishing in a, a giant Eskimo 9614. And then on this side, I'm in one of the new 450 XDs. This is one of the hub houses with that no trip door. We just slid them together and uh, we, we always carried these spring loaded clips. Uh, they're just handy to have around and we've used them to just kind of pinch the two doors together. I think it's gonna work pretty good. So uh, we're on the Fox River. The bite's been decent prior to the cold front. We do expect these conditions are gonna slow things down a little bit. And then because we're fishing in fairly shallow water, we're in about nine foot right now. Uh, and what will happen is these fish will rise way off the bottom before they hit. They almost never hit in that bottom two, three feet. We're gonna try to get some of those strikes on underwater camera. We're gonna put that camera down about three, three and a half feet below the ice and see if we can get those walleyes to come up. And if we get that camera placement just right, maybe we can get some of those fish hitting on camera. So it uh, should be a, a lot of fun today, uh, but the conditions are definitely gonna be a challenge, but we're gonna find a way to make it work. There he is. You on him? Yeah, not a very big one though, bud. Right on. <laughs> that one made me work for it so bad. <laughs> Playing the your classic Fox River eater there. Yeah. Playing the yo-yo game with you. Yeah. Up and down, up and down. <laughs> He'd go in and out. Not the giant, but boy, I tell you what, he was kind of fun yeah. playing the video game. Yeah. There's your 14, 15 inch walleye. Just gobs of these in the fox right now. See you later. I love fish. how these fish interact with the baits here. I, it's just crazy how fast some of these fish chase and how far they'll come up off the bottom, you know. For a day when it's 35 below zero with the wind chill, really the <laughs> first nasty cold front of the yeah. year, to do this back home on like a natural lake, yep, it's not gonna work like this. No, absolutely <laughs> not. Not the not. same kind of reaction. So, no. you know, thank heavens for rivers once in a while, right? <laughs> yeah, agreed. <laughs> Got one. On him. Heck yeah, bud. Good job, Bowen. There we Little go. guy. Little Look at dude. that color you got on there. 
We're all copycat now. Yeah. Well, Red Chrome is the jam. When you find the one, it's the one. Yeah, it, no it's doubt. It's going to be right. It's going to be a tough day. We got to... <laughs> <laughs> there you go. So if you, if you can see the setup that Connor and I are running here, we got a double hole system. And with that, we uh, put our transducer just downstream of the hole we're jigging in. There is a little bit of current here. We're not in swift current by any means, but it's enough to suck that jig and wrap downstream slightly. And with that being just downstream of us, the angle of the cone will catch our baits really well. Show us the fish we're working, like this one right here. I'm marking too. All right, come on. Yeah, mine, mine gave me the... Heck no. The no-go. The smaller fish are going to be more willing to play, but those big ones are going to be tough to fool today, yeah. I think. At Eskimo, we have the tools to help you enjoy your time on the ice. They say man needs food, clothing, and shelter. When it comes to shelter, we like the Outbreak 450i with its full-size no-trip door that's nearly 74% bigger than a standard door, making it much easier to load and unload. With 75 square feet of fishable area, you'll be warm and comfortable during your day on the ice. Check out the Outbreak 450i and our full line of products at GetEskimo.com. From the first time you pick up a tuned up custom rod, you'll know you're holding something special. A rod not mass produced, but built one at a time by the hands of gifted craftsmen. Rods like the Precision, ice fishing's most versatile multi-species rod, or the Precision Noodle with a tip so sensitive you'll never fish a spring bobber again. And the Commander, the rod that's never met a big fish it couldn't best. Tuned up custom rods, ice rods handcrafted for you and the way you fish. Reed's Family Outdoor Outfitters in Walker, Minnesota has the hottest products for ice fishing at unbeatable prices. Everything from ice electronics, ice shelters, and ice clothing from all the top brands. And the newest lithium-powered augers with special everyday pricing on the Garmin LiveScope Ice Bundle. Whether you're visiting us in Walker, Minnesota or placing an order online at reedsports.com, our state-of-the-art distribution center ensures you'll get your order fast. Reed's Family Outdoor Outfitters offers the best service, best price, best advice, guaranteed. Biggest fish of the day. Nice. That ain't horrible. Oh yeah, that's a nice fish. Still on the red chrome. I'd say that's the 18er. Decent fish. We are seeing so many of these walleyes on the sonar. I think we just got that one on the underwater camera coming up and eating that bait. But uh, you know, these rivers are so fertile. The problem is getting them to eat. They'll come in, they'll take a look, they'll investigate. But to get one to actually eat is the trick. There we go. All right, just a 17, I don't know if it'd go 18. We're fishing in about nine feet of water and what we're doing is we've got an underwater camera down at about four feet. Most of these fish will hit four or five feet off the bottom. Rarely do they hit you know, within six inches or a foot. They wanna chase. You get these fish way up off the bottom and that's where they hit the baits. But I'm gonna fire that one back. All right, decent water clarity, I'd say, you know, maybe four or five foot of clarity. And I was able to see that fish just as my bait was coming up on screen that while I grabbed it. So hopefully we've got the footage, but I mean, for every fish we mark, you know, we're probably marking 10 fish to every one that actually hits the bait. It's a lot of fun. I mean, we're getting a lot of really cool sonar shots too of these walleyes coming up underneath these baits and more often than not they just kind of just turn off at the last second without hitting it. That one was able to seal the deal though. So number three jig and wrap in red chrome right there. 
we're tipping it with an emerald shiner head. Uh, pretty small bait, really, you know, for the size of the walleyes that are available here. It wouldn't be super uncommon to catch a, you know, eight, nine pounder or even larger, but they're preferring the smaller baits today. We've got that just horrible cold front, kind of like the first real serious one of the year. And I think these fish are a little shell shocked. So we're gonna give them smaller baits and uh, we're gonna be tipping with live bait to see if we can't uh, increase our chances a little bit. All right, I need a minnow head on there. And again, just, just using the head. We got some shiners that died in our bucket on us, so we're just weeding through those versus using the, the ones that are still lively. That's what the finished deal looks like there, just a minnow head on it. Just gives it a little meat. Very often the fish will really key in on that. You know, it's really amazing how much time these fish spend looking over these baits. And you can see it when you, you get a fish on the underwater camera. They'll take multiple swipes. They'll work around it. They'll get just put their eye just right up on that bait and really inspect it before they, they hammer it. On. Hey! Gotcha. Get him, get him, get him. Yay! <laughs> <laughs> what color did you get that one on, Peach? That one caught me playing on my phone. <laughs> did he? <laughs> that was on the uh, red chrome. I want that, to tell the people at home that's not the first time that's ever happened. No, no, I actually, you know, usually early and late in the day, I start out with that number five glow. That's mm -hmm. been a staple for me for forever. I mean, that's the first one I want in the morning, the last one I have in the afternoon. But once it comes to that mid morning, it's time to start playing with colors. And I think somebody else might have discovered this one, but. Yeah, red, red chrome's been pretty good yeah, for me. Yeah. <laughs> I don't have a problem following when, when it's working. No, that just makes sense. Yeah, I just, these river fish are something special though. They, like the, the chase that these fish do, I mean, that one probably ended up hitting me maybe three and a half feet down. That's cool. First marked it at eight foot, so. Well, one of, cool. one of the main reasons we're here Absolutely. versus trying to do a walleye show on a natural lake in Minnesota is these fish, even under crazy bad conditions, still will have some aggression yeah. left in them. Yeah, and that, that's one very important thing to note. When it comes to cold front fishing, there's no place I'd rather be than on a river. Yep. You can still make it work. <laughs> so, all right, we'll get that one back. Off you go, bud. There we go. Yeah, Connor just actually went outside to do some poking around and jump around and see if these fish are working different depths. That's one thing, over the years of fishing the Fox River, you will find there will be a specific depth and a specific path those fish are taking for the day. I mean, these are relatively featureless sand flats that we're fishing, but it's amazing how the fish will key in on, on just a certain depth or a certain area. And if you're not in that path, it's not working out too well for you. So it definitely pays to jump around even in small increments. It can be 10 feet one way or 15 the other, just drilling some holes and finding where that lane is, where those active fish are running. Introducing the new Pro Suit Jacket and Bibs from Strike Master. Built for the coldest, toughest conditions, the Pro Suit features a ripstop polyester outer shell that is as comfortable as it is durable. A puff liner jacket adds both warmth and versatility, while integrated SOS stay on surface flotation provides up to two hours of flotation when the jacket and bibs are worn as a pair. Strike Master, the hottest brand on the ice. Okuma Fishing Tackle offers a complete lineup of reels for the die-hard ice angler. The Okuma Samar 10 and Inspira 20 are a perfect match with your favorite panfish or walleye ice fishing rod. Both feature a long stem handle that fits comfortably in a gloved hand. Cyclonic flow rotor technology that throws water off the reel to minimize ice buildup. And a drag system optimized for use in extreme conditions. Everywhere, every day, every fish. Okuma Fishing Tackle is inspired fishing. Does your sonar offer dual-spectrum chirp, producing razor-sharp images on an ultra-bright HD display? The ability to tailor the display to the way you fish. Precision GPS functionality with legendary Lake Master mapping to move effortlessly from ice to open water. If not, 
you should be fishing an Ice Helix, the electronic system that offers all the features and performance successful ice anglers demand, only from Humminbird. Suffix Advanced Mono is now on ice. Our toughest and most sensitive mono ever offers 50% less stretch than standard monofilaments. That means your hook sets are rock solid with virtually no line memory, no matter how cold the conditions. The line you choose is your direct connection between you and your next big bite. With Suffix, there's nothing you can't catch. Always use the best line. This winter, choose Suffix Advanced Ice Monofilament. The mono that thinks it's a braid. <laughs> on, still rocking the red and uh, silver. Still, still on that number three red chrome. Oh God. Not bad fish. Yeah, just the red chrome. That has been the ticket today. I, I mean, thought he was going to be smart and get that minnow from you. <laughs> yeah, it did. didn't work out that way. He <laughs> just went in for the minnow grab. <laughs> All right. There's get you off. Of yep, yep. We're getting into that, that window where. They should start firing up. It, it's funny how easy you can read these fish throughout the course of the day. Let me get that one back. It's just, you know, you get in that midday and three quarters of the fish that you mark, they're, they're just slow and lazy and you start coming in these little peak windows. The speed is like four to five times what it, what it was midday. You know? I went a half hour, never marked a fish. During the last five minutes, I've marked three. Right, exactly. Got one. There you go, bro. Oh, he choked <laughs> it. <laughs> yeah, that thing is Gandhi. It's another uh, average size. I think wow. you're going to need that on there. Yeah. Uh, definitely afternoon bite window type of stuff. <laughs> I just had fish coming through in just waves. Where are they? Here. Yep, did not get one to eat. It's good to see that activity level mm -hmm. though increase and you, you know it's right around the corner. Right. There we go. <laughs> on. <laughs> it's just amazing how on the Fox River here, bad fish, how high these river fish will actually chase up underneath the ice. Um, I can remember a trip with you last year where I actually had a fish bump my transducer and then wolf my bait in the hole pretty much, like inches below the hole. It's just absolutely amazing how aggressive these river fish are. <laughs> yeah, when we have about, say, 12 inches of ice, sometimes we get the fish to eat literally six inches up our hole because it's kind of natural to them from the emerald shiners that are in here. Absolutely. They'll yep. use the ice as cover pretty much and yep. the fish come right up and eat them yeah so. put, push the bait fish right up underneath the ice mm -hmm. to kind of corner them yeah uh, very unique very cool all right we'll get that one back in there off you go buddy nice job. in depth outdoors spot on the spot id on today's spot on the spot id we're going to use a map uh, that we've pulled off of our fish smart app from our phone and we're going to go into detail and describe the strategy that we used to target fish during this incredibly powerful cold front. So what we have right here is a section of the Fox River. Uh, the dam on the Fox River would be right about here, and Green Bay is that way as you follow the channel. Now, we made the decision uh, before going out that what we were gonna do is we were gonna get up on the edges of the shallow flats versus targeting the deeper water. We knew that in the deeper water, we were gonna have more fish, right? Uh, under these tough conditions, very often fish will move a little deeper. They'll cluster in the deepest water possible. And the reason we decided not to target those fish is they tend to be very negative, neutral, just like no chance that you're gonna get those fish to bite. Whereas fish that are up roaming on the flats might still be in a really grouchy mood, but they're more likely to be in a mood that will allow you to actually catch them. So where we placed the fish house, the hubs that we joined together in this episode was, on the top of the break adjacent to deeper water. And what we found was actually pretty surprising. Uh, we marked 
and interacted with a lot more fish during the day than we ever thought was possible. I'm not gonna tell you it was hundreds of fish, but each one of us, the three of us, fishing in those two Eskimo hubs, uh, interacted with dozens of fish over the course of the day. And it took quite a bit to convince those fish to bite. Uh, but to our surprise, there were lots of fish that would come up off the bottom, chase two or three feet off the bottom, and then just slowly drift away. Uh, they almost wanted it. But by the end of the day, we were able to put, you know, 15, 18, 20 fish, we, I can't remember what the total count was, on the ice. And, uh, but you know, by the end of the day, we actually could say it was a pretty decent bite despite the incredibly tough fishing conditions. So, you know, keep in mind that uh, anytime you're faced with a really intense cold front like this, uh, you may be able to get on top of more fish in deeper water. But uh, those fish will very often be very neutral, not gonna bite. Uh, so look a little shallower, in this case, quite a bit shallower, to get up on top of those feeding, feeding flats where you, know, you can expect to find fish during optimum conditions. Uh, those fish, even though you're gonna still find that a lot of them are not willing to eat, are often a lot more aggressive. Put this approach, this idea to work the next time you're faced with a really intense cold front, and I think you're gonna be really surprised by the results. Randall GM in Aiken, Minnesota's only haggle-free Chevrolet, Buick, and GMC dealer is a proud sponsor of In-Depth Outdoors TV. Our Brandle value price ensures that you don't have to spend your entire day haggling to get a great deal. And every new vehicle comes with our exclusive gimmick-free lifetime powertrain warranty. Whether you're in need of service, sales, parts, or body shop repair, stop by our state-of-the-art facility in Aiken or visit us 24-7 at BrandleGM.com. With the release of the Tungsten Bullfly Jig from BMC, your panfish presentation just got buggier. By creating a spot-on invertebrate imitator destined to fool the most wary panfish, the Tungsten Bullfly Jig is available in nine colors to further accommodate today's angling, including four metallic finishes and five ultra-glow colors, which hold a charge up to 15 minutes. This winter, match the hatch and outsmart the most finicky panfish with the BMC Bullfly Jig. Glacial Lakes Dock is now Glacial Lakes Recreation. Located in Starbuck, Minnesota, we offer the same great location, staff, and service with a new name to better fit our ever-expanding business. As an authorized dealer and service center for Yeti and now Alumalite Ice Houses, we have you covered if you're looking for a new house or just need a little service. Stop in today or check us out online at glaciallakesrec.com and make this ice season your most enjoyable and comfortable ever. Heck yeah. Finally. I mean, I've seen so many fish in the last five, 10 minutes here. Oh boy. There you go. You finally get him to eat and he acts like he was starving. <laughs> but I think we're getting into that time of the day where they're just coming through in waves. You know, if this had been a prefrontal day, you, know, you see that many fish coming through, it probably would just be killing them. But with this cold front, they are just so much more lethargic. They are not making it easy on us today. But I suppose you put a bait in front of enough fish and you stay patient enough, you're just gonna catch a percentage of them. And that's what it's kind of been about today. Fire that fish back later, dude. Well, Markin. Get, yeah. Got him. Yeah. <laughs> I think it's turning into an afternoon crush fest here. <laughs> Absolutely. <laughs> That's awesome to watch them just change their attitude like that and just snap on. Right. You know? Definitely not getting the potential size here, but yeah. I mean, these are great fish, fun yep. to catch. Fun to catch. And we know there's quality around. Of course, there's always a chance for a hog while you're up here. Right. So each racing red mark, you never know what it's gonna be. <laughs> Later. Good work, my man. Oop. Oh, come on here. There we go. Excellent. Get over here, buddy. Atta boy. 
we're getting into this afternoon feeding window here and we are just having all kinds of fish come cruise up on us and, and some very large marks um you know with this cold front the uh big fish kind of have that sluggish mood going on where i don't think they can quite compete with with these smaller eater fish nor do they want to i don't believe no uh they're just not playing the game no. thankfully we've got these nice eaters to keep us busy yeah absolutely i mean <clears throat> this has been great action about as good as we can ask for really we we tend to ask for more all the time <laughs> i mean we, we all want big fish don't we we push our luck yes yeah <laughs> here you go bud <laughs> excellent got one there you go bud i just switched to that glow jig and wrap here yeah we're getting to be last light and first and last light that really seems to be the ticket yeah. i did the same exact thing is that the one with the uh chartreuse head yep with the chartreuse head that, that is by far my favorite low light jig and wrap sure. or after dark it's been a staple almost everywhere we fish too <laughs> you got those pliers yeah the one thing uh fish can agree on yep <laughs> which they don't agree on much <laughs> ever no there you go bud Glow jig and wrap coming through. Get him. Well, oh, I think the color change might be in order over here. I've just got them boiling up on me. Do, do you? And they, they won't. They, they don't won't want seal the deal. Yep. Mm -mm. So that brings us to the end of today's show. It was a tough bite, but at the end of the day, our strategy to get up on top of those shallow flats and target the fish that were going to be just a little bit more aggressive actually paid off for us. A uh, huge thanks to PJ Vick and Connor Bowen for coming out and being willing to fish on a day when uh, wind chills fell 35 below zero. Uh, not exactly the most ideal conditions to be out there on the ice. Now, anybody looking for some information on this fishery on the Fox River, look up Connor Bowen on Facebook. He's a young guy, but he's a wealth of knowledge. So now here's the silver lining to all this cold weather. What it's doing is making a lot of ice in places that prior to this week, we're off limits. You're going to be seeing us really burning up some road miles here in the next couple weeks, headed to some of our favorite destinations, Saginaw Bay, Lake Superior, and maybe even Lake Erie. So stick around. We've got a lot more great ice fishing coming yet as part of our broadcast season here on In-Depth Outdoors. For more info on the latest fish reports, gear recommendations, and hottest techniques, connect with us online at indepthoutdoors.com or follow us on Facebook at Indepth Outdoors. And if you enjoyed today's show, be sure to let our sponsors know.